Now that we know what virtual memory is, let's go into some practicalities. So we just discussed this whole um, thing that's called a page table, and we had this wonderful solution for everything. But is it even feasible? Well, we know the following about page tables. We need to provide a virtual page number for every single page in the memory. And each page table entry stores the, um, pay, the, the physical page number and the metadata, all the RWX and so forth, the bits and so forth. And we also know that page tables cannot be swapped out. If we swap out the page table, we're not going to be able to find it, right? So with that in mind, how much memory do we actually need to store a page table? Well, let's assume a 32-bit address with 4 kilobytes of data. So um, if we have a 12-bit offset, the PPN size is about 20 bits. So we need to store 20 bits per entry with a bunch of metadata. Well, we can take 4 bytes, right? 32 bits will probably be enough to store a page table entry. So let's make it round, and we'll say that our page table entries are each four bytes long. Okay, that therefore to have all two to the 32 bits, uh, two to the 20, excuse me, uh, virtual page numbers with, that are each four bytes long, we need four megabytes in order to store one page table. So is that reasonable or feasible? Hmm, let's see. Of course it is. We probably have gigabytes of DRAM. So we'll also need four gigabytes of swap, Hmm, yeah, it sounds like uh, four megabytes is a reasonable size for a page table. But what if we have 100 processes or 1,000 processes? Well, that's going to take up our whole memory just storing the page tables without storing the pages themselves. So this is a real problem. And maybe everything I was talking about before just is infeasible and cannot be done. Well, let's look at a possible solution. We can use larger pages. Why do we keep assuming these kind of very small four kilobyte pages if we have you know, four gigabytes or whatever of memory or in our computers we tend to have 16 or even more gigabytes than that and on servers we may have a terabyte even of DRAM. So why do we have these real small four kilobyte pages? And the thing is that it's really hard to get rid of old habits. You see this chip over here? That was the Intel 386. Came out in 1985, the first version of it. And they decided to support four kilobyte pages. And since then, we kind of support them. But being serious, you know, small pages are a really good thing. So a small, a small uh, four kilobyte page means that our page tables are four megabytes. Um, but it means that the minimum OS all allocation quanta is one page. And so we can, um, so large pages can really lead us to internal fragmentation. And if we have only four kilobyte pages, our fragmentation is really going to be, you know, negligible. And the other thing is the page faults are cheaper. We only need to transfer, you know, that four kilobytes at a time. So less data transfer will take us less time. That being said, you know, larger pages really probably are better. Um, we have a larger page. That means we have a lot more spatial locality. And that means we're going to get fewer page faults, which is much better than less transfer time per each page fault. Disks benefit from burst operations. So the penalty for larger transfers is probably going to be small. Um, the first thing is really turning around the disk head and finding the actual um, page in there. So if we can just do that once and then transfer a lot of data, it doesn't cost as much as, you know, many, many page fault. And um, the other thing is that, of course, we get smaller page tables. So if we have a four megabyte page, for example, then we, um, you know, have only four kilobyte page tables. And that's much, much, much smaller than four megabytes. And we can really store a lot, lot, lot of four kilobyte page tables. But even if we have huge page tables, 64 bits is going to kill all of that. So if we have a 64-bit address, we have four megabyte pages and 8-byte uh, eight eight um, uh, uh, page table entries, it's going to come out 32 terabytes just for a page table. Uh, that's not going to be feasible. So what are we going to do? Well, why don't we try multi-level page tables? Of course, we said that the solution to all problems in computer science, you know, in computer architecture is more indirection. So let's do more indirection. We'll divide the virtual address into a hierarchy of page tables, as you can kind of see here. So the first thing we'll do is we'll access what we call the first level page table or the base page. Okay, so that's going to be, for example, in this example, we're going to take 10 bits and um, use those 10 bits or 1,024 entries as what we call the base page, the page table. So now we're going to have this uh, special register in Risk Five. It's called SATP or the Supervisor Address Translation and Protection Register that's going to point to the base of the base page. And in that, we're going to have 1,024 entries. But these entries, they are not actually 
page tables themselves, but they're rather pointers to additional second level page tables, which we get over here. So the second level level page tables are those page tables that we had. So each one of these um, uh, entries over here is a pointer, which actually accesses a whole four megabytes. Whereas each one of these page tables, so one of those points to the base of a of a regular page table, which accesses four kilobyte pages. But each one of them is only 1,024 pages um, versus the whatever we had before. Okay, so that's the second level page table. And then with this, we actually get the actual uh, physical page number that's pointed to over here. So we either page, point to physical memory or to the disk from each one of these. But since our, our really our address space is very sparse, so this lets us divide it and have much, much, much smaller page tables. The problem is over here is that we need the first pay, uh, you know, DRAM access to go and get this first level translation that will give us the pointer basically to the second level page table. So we need a second DRAM access to get the translation from our our complete virtual page number to the physical page number, and then a third DRAM access to go and get our actual page. So that's three DRAM accesses for each of these, uh, for, for each and every access to the memory. And that's with, you know, only two levels of indirection. If we have a 64-bit um, type of address, we're probably going to have even more of these levels of hierarchy. So we're going to need several DRAM accesses, which are very costly, as we said. Um, in fact, when we actually go through this type of, uh, type of thing, it's called a page walk. So how is it done in RISC-V in, in a practical way? RISC-V actually defines various specifications. So um, usually for a 32-bit um, processor, we're going to use what's called the SV32 specification, and that includes two levels. That's actually what we saw before. We have a 32-bit virtual address. It is able to address a 34-bit physical address, so we can um, support a bit larger uh, memory uh, instead of our, our four gigabyte memory. We're going to actually have you know 16 gigabytes that we're going to be able to support over here. But we're going to have really 10 bits for um, the base uh, the base page table and 10 bits for the second level page table, um, just as we saw in the example before. Once we go up to RV64 for 64-bit processors, we can uh, have several formats. They're called SV39, SV48, SV57, etc. by the number of bits it actually uses because we probably don't need a full 64-bit address space. So these are um, using smaller address spaces. They give us more levels of indirection um, and longer virtual and physical addresses. Um, the SATP register, which is that uh, that base register that it points to the uh, base of the page table, um, it looks something like this. So we have the mode. What is it? Is it SV32, SV39, etc.? And we have the physical page number uh, number in, in there, and we have the ASID, which actually helps us decipher what um, what process is actually running right now, so we don't have to flush the cache all the time. And a, uh, a page table entry looks like uh, basically all the things that we said before. So we have the physical page number over here, and then we have all this metadata, which includes the things that we discussed. A valid bit um, that tells us if our, if our entry is here or on disk. Um, an access bit, which tells us when the re most recent time that we actually access this is, so we can build all kinds of uh, protocols such as uh, uh, pseudo LRU to um, replace these guys. Dirty bit that says if we wrote to the page um, since the last time we read it. Um, RWX for uh, access permissions and all kinds of other data, user mode, global mapping, some reserve bits, and so forth for future use. Um, an interesting mapping over here that we have is it, it, if you have no permissions, in other words, R, W, and X are all zero, it actually means that this is a first level page that's actually a pointer to a second level page. So that's how you know you can, uh, um, you can encode this in your hardware to know that you have to go in your page walker to the next level. Uh, so uh, now that we've discussed all of this, I want to summarize some of the ter terminology we talked about before with caches and go over to virtual memory. In caches, we dealt with individual blocks. They were usually, a typical size was going to be 64 bytes on a modern system. In virtual memory, we deal with pages. Um, these are usually about 4 k kilobytes on modern systems. Um, we can support l much larger uh, virtual pages as well. Um, the common points, uh, points of confusion are bytes, words, blocks, and pages, but these are really just all different ways of looking at memory. So when we look at a, a cache, you know, we talk about a cache block 
or a cache line. And on virtual memory, we talk about a page. Um, when we talk about hits and misses, we call them hits and misses in caches, but we call them a page fault in, in virtual memory. When we talk about the unit sizes, again, we're talking about several dozen bytes. Uh, versus virtual memory, we're usually talking about kilobytes. Again, there are versions that we can go up to megabytes and even gigabytes per page. Um, for placement, usually placement's going to be some sort of type of direct map or set associative uh, because of the cost of the hardware to implement something like fully associative. But for virtual memory, the importance of not having any page fault is so big that we usually Usually use fully associative that's uh, that's managed by software um, for replacement policies we're going to use something like a pseudo LRU or maybe a random versus a virtual memory we're really going to use LRU or pseudo LRU or something in order to get uh, as low a miss rate as possible and for write policy caches are going to use either write through or write back there are many trade-offs between the two write back is more popular probably um, and for virtual memory we're going to specifically use write back because each and every type uh, um, time that we want to go and write something to uh, the disk is going to be really, really expensive. So let's look at an example for RV32 that will kind of summarize everything we saw. So we have a one gigabyte DRAM, we have four kilobyte pages, and we have 64 byte cache blocks. So our one gigabyte DRAM is actually 256,000 pages. So you see all the pages over here. And that's going to map into four kilobyte pages. So each one of these pages is going to have uh, is going to be four kilobytes. And if we look at it in the resolution of cache blocks, because we're going to load uh, part of one of these pages into the cache at a time, it actually turns out that we have 64 cache blocks in one uh, one DRAM page. And if we look at each one of these cache blocks, these cache blocks are 64 bytes, which on a 32-bit word is going to be 16 words. So we have 16 words inside one cache block. And of course, one word is going to be four bytes. So we have a 32-bit word is four bytes, as we can see over here.